Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, got some updates for you on this whole multi-patient single ventilator uh, proposed setup that I have here. Uh, if you haven't seen part one and part two, uh, the detail, the circuit setup and the inspiratory expiratory assemblies, uh, make sure you go back and watch those because I'm not gonna detail them too much here in this video. I just really wanna show you guys the proof of concept. So I was finally able to test this down at UCSD Sim Center along with um, their respiratory care department, uh, anesthesia, engineering, um, and a couple of, couple of other people were down there as well. And uh, we finally were able to get all the equipment together, get some test lungs, and actually, um, actually get, this, get this working so we can demo it. The biggest change is going to be cutting the setup down from four patients to two patients. Uh, we figured four is going to obviously add lots of complications, so we tested with two. Theoretically, you could expand it to three or four, but even if it works with just two, um, that potentially doubles the number of available ventilators if we can figure out a way to get this to work with every single vent. Right here is just a quick shot of the schematic of the inspiratory expiratory assembly just so that anybody who's jumping into it with us right now kind of has an idea of how we're getting this to work. Again, this is detailed um, in the first and second videos as well. So before we play the actual video, just want to cover what the proof of concept here actually is. It's that we have one ventilator able to deliver variable inspiratory pressures, delta P's, and peeps to each patient without having to worry about cross-contamination between patients, any pendulooft effect, any competitive exhalations which impair the exhalations of another patient, or disconnects affecting the other patient should we have to bag, swap equipment, deal with codes, anything like that. All the while, each patient has individual humidification needs met, end tidal CO2 monitoring, airway pressure monitoring, and bacterial viral filtration of the inhaled and exhaled gas. Our simulation uses pressure controlled ventilation with long inspiratory times. Patients would be paralyzed and sedated. The long inspiratory times and preferably inverse IDE ratios, um, 1.5, 2 to 1, somewhere around there would be preferable for our patients with stiff lungs anyway and allow the vent to evenly distribute gas to each patient. Uh, one patient has lower compliance, one patient has higher compliance. Inspiratory pressure is adjusted with the ball valves on the inspiratory side and our PEEP is adjusted with the um, external adjustable peep valves. So let's listen to Dr. Merritt, one of the anesthesiologists, explain what we have going on here. This patient's so compliant that he's getting pretty big volumes just with uh, 12 inspired pressure. Meanwhile, this patient, who's a sicker patient, is still getting 28 over 8, and this gentleman's getting uh, 12 over 5. And if we need to put more pressure into this patient again, we can turn this up even more. 40. Let's keep up a little bit. Now this patient's getting 38 over 8. This patient is getting 14 over 5. As you can see, the tidal volumes are still different, but now we're getting bigger tidal volumes on the sicker patient than reasonable tidal volumes on the more compliant patient. 